We'll read down through verse number 18, have a word of prayer, and then we'll look at uh, uh, these last uh, three verses here in Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3, verse 16, the word of God tells us that they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to bless the reading of the scriptures tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this time that you allow us to come together tonight to worship thee in spirit and truth. And Father, we are uh, so thankful, dear Lord, for the blessings of today, for health to be here this evening, for the breath of life you give us to enjoy creation today, uh, for the fellowship that we've had here at, at your house this evening, Lord. And Father, as we look to the bread of life tonight, Lord, I pray that you feed our spiritual souls. Lord, I pray that we would learn something tonight to help us in our daily walk with thee. And Father, as we uh, uh, look at this thought about this book of remembrance that you have recorded, uh, Father, I pray, dear Lord, that uh, we may be reminded, dear Lord, that you're always watching and you're always looking. And so, Father, everything that we do is not hidden from thy sight, dear Lord. And so you know exactly what we do each and every day. And so, Father, I pray that, that we would take this to heart before the heart before we react or before we speak or before we do, uh, that, Father, you are watching and are taking notice through our actions and to our deeds and to our words. And, Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'd help me tonight as I preach. Lord, I pray that you'd strengthen my voice and lungs to be able to preach your word. Give me that anointing of the Holy Ghost to preach the truth in love. And, Heavenly Father, if there's one here tonight that does not know thee as Lord and Savior, Lord, I pray that you convict their heart of sin and judgment to come and that you draw them to yourself tonight and that they come forward and be saved before it's eternally too late. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you for what, you, uh, what you've done. We thank you and praise you for what you're going to do. For it's in Jesus' name we do ask and pray these things. And amen. And notice here uh, in verse number 16, it's talking about this remnant of people who still abide faithful to God and still fear God and have a desire to serve Him and to trust Him and obey Him. And notice in verse number 16, that they that feared the Lord. You know, the, the Bible tells us uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, 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 when it comes to fearing God, uh, it's not like uh, being fearful that lightning bolts are going to come down out of the sky to, to strike you dead if you think something wrong or do something wrong. Uh, but the word fear here is literally reverential <coughs> respect of God and who He is and for His Word and for His authority and for His commands. Then they that feared the Lord spake off of one to another. Uh, here we are seeing believers having fellowship one with another. Talking about God. Talking about the goodness of God. Talking about the Word of God. Talking about the mercy of God. The grace. The forgiveness. The long-suffering. And share that one with another. Uh, beloved, uh, uh, we all uh, have different backgrounds. We all have different tastes. We all have different personalities. But in spite of the differences that we have as individuals and human beings, one thing that we do have in common is that if we're saved, and I hope everybody here tonight can testify to the fact that you're saved, we can have fellowship one with another around God's Word talking about the common one Savior, Jesus Christ. Now that's something we all can have fellowship one with another about. I may not be able to talk to somebody else about, about football because they might like a, a particular team and I might not like that team and we might not be able to sit down and watch a ball game together or have fellowship one with another or over a make of car or politics or whatever the case may be. But bless God, you and I that are saved, been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ, in spite of those temporal, fleshly differences, we can have fellowship talking about Jesus Christ and can have fellowship around His Word. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so, uh, 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 beloved, I hope uh, all of us here this evening have that same view of the Lord as Isaiah. Uh, he looked up and saw the Lord high and lifted up. 
uh, beloved man has brought God's uh, God down to his his level, and uh, the uh, the creation is trying to tell the Creator what to do and how to do it. Uh, beloved, His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Uh, beloved, we just need to trust Him, take Him at His word, and live by faith and see uh, high and lifted up and exalt His glorious name. Amen. Amen. And so notice here. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And notice, they spoke one to another, and they spoke often. You know, it really bothers me that when we get around a church service uh, uh, setting, uh, whether it be revival or homecoming or just a regular service, I'm surprised, uh, uh, especially uh, outside of church, I'm surprised how many Christians really don't want to talk about Jesus Christ. You know, you go out to the ballpark, you're talking about the ball game, talking about the, the, the stores, the malls, uh, entertainment, hobbies, so forth and so on, but really don't want to talk about the Lord or the goodness of God or the Word of God. Uh, beloved, uh, if that is our common fellowship, is Jesus Christ and His Word, that ought to be the first thing that comes out of our mouth. Amen. You know, we talk about fish, and we talk about sports and hobbies later on down the line, but let's talk about Jesus Christ first and foremost, because He ought to be first in our lives. Amen. But whether it's fear of persecution or or, or just uh, 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 maybe uh, uh, the circumstances, environment, I don't know. Uh, but uh, uh, when we get together as a body of Christ and we come together as believers, we ought to speak often about Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, we can talk the rest of the night all the way up to midnight and not talk about all the wonderful, glorious things that Jesus Christ has done for each and every one of us. That's right. And so then... then uh, uh, then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. Uh-oh, uh, somebody's listening to your conversation. It's not just Siri. It's not just the police. It's not just the IRS. God's listening. Amen. And He loves it when you glorify His name and exalt His name. That's above every name. Amen. 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 And, and uh, uh, when, when you and I as a, a body of believers get together and we start uh, glorifying the, the name of Jesus and exalting the name of Jesus, I believe God leans over his throne, puts a finger behind his ear, and a smile comes to his face because his people are worshiping and praising the name that's above every name. Amen. And so, beloved, that's the way it should be. You know, and uh, uh, let me tell you something, heaven's going to be that way. So we might as well just go ahead and start getting ready for it now. Amen? Amen. And there's no reason that we should not be doing that now. And so notice then that they feared the Lord spake off from one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And notice this. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord, for the fear of the Lord, and that thought upon his name. You know, uh, uh, there's different books that's mentioned throughout the Word of God. Uh, I don't want to use the word obscure books, but uh, there are books that are reference to that's not uh, a lot said about and one of them here is a book of remembrance and uh, uh, some people there's a, a little bit of debate in the theological community about uh, this book of remembrance and what all's contained in it uh, beloved God gives us the answer uh, to this book and what's contained in it in this very in this very verse and a book of remembrance was written before him why for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. That's why the book of remembrance was written. Uh, beloved, uh, uh, let me develop this thought here, but uh, here shortly you'll see where I'm coming from. Uh, but there are two judgments to come. One is the great white throne judgment. The other one is the judgment seat of Christ. And we read over in the book of Revelation uh, during the time of judgment, the Bible says, and the books were open, and then the book of life. And whosoever's name was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And so we're all familiar with the book of life, the Lamb's book of life. Uh, I hope your name's written down there, amen. amen. It better be written down there. Uh, uh, some people believe that the, the book of remembrance uh, records good deeds and bad deeds. Uh, beloved, I believe right here, uh, the book of remembrance, God tells us in this portion of Scripture why it is written. Because when we stand at the judgment seat of Christ, uh, uh, beloved, God is not forgetful. Uh, God is recording all of these things to reward us just and according to our deeds. 
And so when you do something to glorify God, and when you do it for the right motive, and do it for the right reason, and do it because you love Jesus Christ, it is recorded in this book of remembrance. And when you and I, as a child of God, stand before the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ, uh, that book will be open on this day. At this time, you did this. And I'm going to reward you accordingly according to that. And so it's not to remind God, it's to show us and reveal to us that he's what? Hearkening and listening and watching what we do as children of God. Uh, but just some other obscure books, uh, just by way of information, uh, uh, as you go through and you do the, uh, your, your Bible reading, uh, there's a book of wars that's mentioned in Numbers chapter 21, verse 14. Wherefore it is said in the book of the wars of the Lord, what he did in the Red Sea and in the brooks of Arnon. Uh, book of Jasher, Joshua chapter 10, verse number 13. And the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And then the book of the Acts of Solomon, 1 Kings chapter 11. Verse number 41, and the rest of the Acts of Solomon and all that he did and his wisdom, were they not written in the book of the Acts of Solomon? And so when you go through, you're going to see different books mentioned. And beloved, uh, there's, there's a great debate in, in the theological, uh, theological community about what books are going to be there uh, at the judgment. I, I don't know for sure what all is going to be there, but I know there's going to be some books there. And so the Word of God reveals to us and tells us that. We know for certain that the book of life is going to be there. These other books we can talk about, we can speculate about, but we do know uh, that there's going to be books open at the time of judgment. And notice uh, uh, the book of life, Exodus uh, chapter 32, verse number 32. Uh, Moses is pleading with the Lord, yet now if thou will forgive their sin, and if not, block me, I pray thee, out of the book which thou hast written. Revelation chapter 20, verses 12 through 15. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Uh, again, Luke chapter 10, verse number 20. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And so, beloved, uh, God keeps very, very detailed records. Uh, beloved, I, I like to think uh, in the years that I've been pastor here uh, that we've uh, tried to brush up and keep very detailed records of what takes place here at Liberty Baptist Church. But I know that somewhere along the line, uh, there's not something that should have been recorded that hasn't been recorded or something that uh, should have been recorded hasn't been recorded, whatever the case may be. Uh, beloved, I know that there's something that's fallen by the wayside. But you can rest assured that God in heaven has every T crossed and every I dotted and nothing has fallen by the wayside. Amen. And so, uh, beloved, it's interesting when uh, you read the scriptures and these different types of books uh, are, are, are mentioned. Again, the book of life. Uh, there's a book of living uh, uh, that's mentioned in Psalm chapter 69, verse number 28. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous. This would seem to give the indication that the book of living is the same thing as the book of life. Uh, there are some people that, that, that contend that they're two different books. I'm not going to argue with you about it. I just know that the Bible mentions them. If they're one and the same, they're one and the same. If they're different, they're different. But this much I do know, God is storing everything in books and that every man is going to be judged out of those books. And so, uh, notice here, uh, again, about the book of living, uh, Psalm chapter 139, verse 16. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as uh, yet there was none of them. 
And so, uh, beloved, uh, uh, going back to the, uh, the book of Remembrance, uh, uh, you remember in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, uh, notice uh, what the Word of God tells us. But, beloved, we are persuaded better, persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. Verse number 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed toward his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And so, beloved, when you and I, as children of God, we do something to glorify God, do something for his name's sake, it's being recorded, and God's not going to forget it. God's not going to forget it. And so, beloved, when we stand at the judgment seat, um, uh, judgment seat of Christ, and, uh, and the books are opened up, and we receive rewards, God's saying, you're getting this reward because of this. And it's going to be written down, and it's going to be recorded. You know, think about uh, the great white throne judgment. And there'll be those that will stand before God and plead their cause. Well, you never spoke to me. Uh, you never dealt with me. You never revealed yourself to me. The books were going to be open. I dealt with your heart on this day, on uh, this time, at this very second. I revealed myself to you, yet you rejected me. Depart from me, you were workers of iniquity. Depart from me, for I never knew you. And so, uh, let me tell you something. You can fool me. You can fool another man. But you cannot. You cannot fool God. Amen. You cannot fool God. And so, uh, the Bible tells us uh, again in Revelation chapter 20, verse number 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God again. And the books, plural, were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. Isaiah chapter 65, verses 6 and 7 tells us, Behold, it is written before me. Did you get that? Behold, it is written before me. I will not keep silence, but will recompense, even recompense into their bosom, your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers together, saith the Lord, which have burned incense upon the mountains and blasphemed me upon the hills, 